Hello everyone, Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. If you are joining us, uh, you are in for a treat. We're speaking with Nicholas Pinnock, um, who is the star of For Life on ABC. The second season, of course, premieres today, which is kind of why he's making the press rounds and joining us for this. Really looking forward to picking his brain. He's such an established talent in the UK um, and leads this series, produced by 50 Cent, um, and follows the true life story um, of a person who was imprisoned for life, wrongfully, and uh, works while behind bars to make his case overturned, while also working for the freedom of uh, other prisoners along with him. Um, so really looking forward to having him join us. I'm just going to pull him up into our guest here, and we can get started. Hey there, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. I'm Ben Lindsay from Backstage. Um, thanks for joining us today. Absolute pleasure, Ben. Yeah, yeah, it's nice meeting you. Um, now, you're you're kind of in the heat of production, is that right? Yeah, we're in the middle of um, season two. Okay, so we, we caught you on your lunch break. I'm glad you could make time for us. No problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, such a fan of yours and the series. Um, and just for our audience today, um, you've been playing this character, Aaron, for two seasons now. What's been the best part? What's been the most gratifying part of bringing this story to the screen for two years? Um, well, two things really. First and foremost was um, just the, the way that it's captured the audience. I think, you know, we're making television, we're making entertainment, we want an audience to be um, drawn to it and raptured by it and mm -hmm. engaged in it. And I think we've managed to achieve that. But secondly, just the sheer challenge of playing Aaron, these five different versions of this code switching Aaron that um, has been such a challenge for me. It's been wonderful. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a lot of layers to this guy. And uh, you mentioned the code switching, that the richness of this character. Um, how did he, how did the opportunity to play him first come about for you? ABC and I have been talking about uh, working together for a while. And um, what happened was this script came to my door and ABC said, we've got the script. We'd love you to play the lead role. Would you like to play it? And after extensive um, conversations with the creatives and, you know, reading it and rereading it and understanding nuances and going more into depth into it, it became clear that that's exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, absolutely. And was it a special interest to, I mean, just obviously the themes that it's tackling, it's telling an important story. It's it's inspired by a true story. Did that come with an added pressure for you or was that kind of the hook? I got you. Um, it was both, definitely. Yeah. It's definitely, um, you know, it was the hook and it was the the challenge of, of doing that and doing it well. Um, but the, you know, just the way that ABC wanted to, for the first time, find, start finding shows that were cable style, but that could fit on network. And that for me was really interesting. Yeah. And for, for, for our audience today, what, what do you mean by that? Cable style before the network? Well, I think because network television has a, um, they have their boundaries. You can't swear, you can't smoke, you can't have sex. You can't, there's, there's certain things on network television that um, mean that you, can, you are limited into ways of expressing one thing in a story compared to another. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, a, there's an edge that notoriously network television wasn't able to give an audience. Mm -hmm. They're trying to now push that boundary. And, you know, com television is very competitive. You've got Netflix and all the streaming networks. Yeah, of course. Um, and network television has to compete with that. Um, just because of the way that the, the trend of storytelling is changing. And so they wanted material that was going to push the boundaries just that little bit further than they'd be able to go before. And this was it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, and it makes for more compelling stories, I think, yeah. um, to, to not uh, feel censored in, in the way that networks might traditionally be that way. And th that, that certainly fits this bill um, for, for the show. It's, it's so great. Um, what, what are you most looking forward for the audience to get their eyes on season two? Obviously, the premiere is this evening. I am really interested to see how they, um, how they respond to Aaron being out of prison because that's, I mean, it's not, it's not a spoiler here. Right. Uh, this is all part of the remit was that in season two, he was going to leave prison. I'm not going to tell you when it happens, but at some point during season two, 
um, he is released from jail. I'm really interested to see how the audience respond to who he is now compared to mm. who he was. Yeah, yeah. So, so with a show like this, where it is uh, so, so expansive and you're with this character for several years, how has it been kind of mapping him out and mapping out his journey? Is that something that you tackle from the very beginning? You have his backstory, you, ha you know where it's going to end up and you kind of chart it that way? Or is it kind of episode to episode? What does that character building process look like? It's more episode to episode for me. I'm not a, um, I'm not a huge backstory actor. That's okay. Gonna, um, upset a few people and probably make a few people smile. Um, <laughs> but that's just, just not my way. I like to, in the same way that life is an improvisation, I didn't know what I was going to say to you today and how this was going to go. So it's just off the cuff. Mm -hmm. I like to approach it very much like that. And because the episodes are not written completely before we start filming, right. um, there's a certain aspect of even when we're delivered a script, changes can happen all the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't like to have anything fixed. I like it to be um, a flexible approach because you can get one draft that says Aaron is doing X and you get that, another draft of that same episode. Mm -hmm. Aaron isn't quite doing X anymore. He's doing a Y sort of Z thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it still makes sense. It makes it that much richer and more interesting. So where a backstory fails to me is if, he, if you're on that path, but then this happens and that doesn't actually quite compute. Mm -hmm. So I like to just keep it open, approach it as um, freely as possible without having too much fixed. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that of course, comes with your, your experience in the industry to this point. You've been on my radar for, for several years now, but it came as a bit of a surprise to me that you've really been at this since you were 12 years old, since you were yeah. kind of a child actor working your way up. Then you got your proper training and came back to the industry and did the whole thing. Um, but what, what was it that first kind of, uh, how did the performing arts first come on your radar as a passion, as a career prospect? How did it kind of line up for you there? Um, it was, there was this, um, this box in my living room as a child that had colors and lights and moving images on it. And um, my, old, my family used to respond to that box and used to be mesmerized by this thing in the corner of the room. And, you know, I was sort of like, hold on, there's a box over there and there's my family on the couch. And they're loving everything that's coming out of that box. And the people in that box are really making my family react in all different ways. They'd cry, they'd laugh, they'd shout, they'd scream, they'd react. I want to be one of the people in the box. Mm -hmm. and that was basically, as a four-year-old, I decided I wanted to be one of those small people that lives in that box. Yeah. And obviously, it's, it's been something that has stuck with you through the years. But what, what, um, and, and you've reached such great successes, but obviously, that doesn't happen without some pitfalls along the way. Was there ever a point where you doubted that this is what you wanted to do? And how did you push through that doubt, rejection, and anything that comes with that? It was never a doubt that that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. It was a doubt as to whether that was possible. Sure. And so, you know, I mean, I'm, even now sometimes I go, I'm, I'm gonna get found out. You know, the imposter syndrome thing, is mm. it gonna, you know, yes, I'm working now, am I gonna work tomorrow? You yeah. Know, I'm, I may be, um, able to do this role, will I be able to do the next one? And it's just mm -hmm. it's a constant thing. And I think um, that's one of the things that has kept me pushing and growing and striving for to be, you know, better and more nuanced at what I do as an actor. I think you get to a point where um, where your best has happened. And it's mm -hmm. a matter of then just reshaping what that looks like. I think there's always still, there's definitely still things to learn about yourself, yeah. therefore about, you know, your approach to your craft and the industry. Um, but I think you get to a point where you've delivered all you can deliver. I don't think I've gotten to that point yet. I've still got a way to go for me personally. And I think, but what happens to a lot of actors, I mean, you know, actors that deliver brilliant performance after brilliant performance and they win Oscars and all that sorts of stuff you get to a point where you've just reached this pinnacle and you can't go beyond that. Mm -hmm. But it's how you shape that and redefine it and um, reimagine it and reinvent it to then approach the next role. Yeah. I think that's what the Meryl Streep's do and your Mark Ruffalo's and, you know, your Angela Bassett's and people who are just masters at what they do. 
Yeah. yeah. Just about recrafting the best that you can deliver because your yeah. best has, has been delivered already. Yeah, that's that's great. That's great. And and you say yourself that you don't think that you've hit that best mark yet. So in what ways do you continue to challenge yourself and continue learning? Um, and then to tie it back to for life, how, how has it allowed you to grow as an actor, as a performer? I mean, for life has definitely been the most challenging role that I've, I've delivered. Um, and I've grown so much in, in this process, having to deliver, you know, six, seven different versions of, of Aaron through the code switching, the, the prisoner, the prisoner rep, the, um, the father, the husband while in prison, the relationship he has as prisoner rep with the warden, the, the lawyer, mm -hmm. um, the, the, um, the flashback Aaron before he went mm -hmm. to prison and now the seventh one, which is Aaron outside of prison, been, having been released. Yeah. So that's definitely been, because with that comes a whole essence of different nuances within itself. Aaron, the lawyer, is going to be very different to Aaron, who he is talking to Jamal and his fellow prisoners. Mm -hmm. you know, the language is different, the cadence is different, the articulation is slightly different, the choice of words is different, the demeanor and the posture is different. Um, so having, you know, play with those different facets of who Aaron is throughout his time in, in prison has been really, really interesting. And so for me, there's still areas to grow within Aaron. Mm -hmm. As an actor, um, I'm constantly looking for bigger and better, more challenging and nuanced roles that I've never done before. And if it doesn't, you know, if a role doesn't scare me and frighten the shit out of me to a degree where I feel I can't handle it, then I'm not interested in playing it. It has to be something that I feel is beyond what I've done before. Yeah. Or similar to something I've done, but I'm going to have to do some work to actually bring this to life in a way that's believable and entertaining. Yeah, yeah. And this is certainly checking those boxes, to say the least. Um, well, two, two more questions for you before we wrap up here. Uh, it sounds like you didn't need to audition for For Life, but you're no stranger to the audition room. Uh, some of our audience today, the backstage audience, are the working mm -hmm. actors of the world who are doing the self-tapes, doing the audition rooms. Do you, you have any tips on how to leave an impression and really make the most of the opportunities? Well, I think, you know, there is no such thing as audition technique. Yeah. I, I absolutely hate that phrase and anyone who's given classes stop it um <laughs> there is no technique i tell you why because no one knows what the casting director is looking for no one knows what the director and the producers in the room are looking for and in fact they don't know until they see it mm -hmm. all you have to do is put the best of what you can possibly do into that audition and walk away from it knowing you've done your best if, yeah you know you could and sometimes you could be the best on the day and you know you've delivered that performance and something in your gut tells you that's that you're the best person to walk into that room or that's the best tape they're going to see mm -hmm. but just because you're the best on the day doesn't mean you're the right one on the day um so don't get caught up in if you don't get the role thinking that you need to reshape what you do or what your performance is mm -hmm. um do it if it's on tape do it give them what i always do is i give them um three or four different versions of the same scene so that they know that I can switch it and flip mm -hmm. it around. Mm -hmm. um, and I always give them three or four takes of the same scene, but they're all very, very different. And so you, it shows your range. I think yeah. that's a really, really good thing to deliver. And from the casting directors that I've talked to about the process, they've always appreciated that being the main thing. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great tip to walk away with. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and kind of in line with that, you have been at this since you were a child and teen actor. What's one piece of advice that you would give your younger self? Um, maybe when you were first getting your start, just what's something you've learned through your experience along the way that would have been nice to know back then? Ooh, that's a great question. What would I tell my younger self growing up? Um, I would tell myself something that someone told me. If you don't believe in you, no one else can. Hmm. Fair enough. We'll take it. Um, well, Nicholas, it's been great to, uh, to have your ear for a moment. Thanks for sharing your time with us. No, you're welcome. Um, congrats on season two, and uh, I'll let you get back to work. You're, you're in the middle of filming. So uh, have a good rest of your day. Have a safe time. 
uh, filming and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Wishing you and yours well. Thank you. Right. you too. Bye-bye.